Dawson. We give you all great warm greetings. We are quite hearty to address you all today. And we have noticed a very unique occurrence. Regardless of numbers or genders, we have seldom addressed such a balanced and harmonious group of people. So, to begin with, there are so many olds here, and that this now olds are having a quite stretchy and sometimes even desperate time to maintain a positive beingness attitude outlook there are so many occurrences that contain so much conflict and discord that olds find that many times sometimes nearly continually hope seems quite scarce and difficult to sustain. So first we wish to offer some light into this seeming darkness and offer this for thought and consideration in what is generally offered, advertised, propagandized, shared in news. The gearing is toward sensationalism and that which maintains control and leading ability to lead in other words control through keeping people in fear and desperate to follow any clarity or anything that gives what you might call concrete to stand upon instead of continual quicksand. So, It is important to retain in your perspective that you are being continually bombarded with what is negative and little is offered, although much is occurring that is creating positive. There are many people, projects, technologies, developments, discoveries, and funders that are engendering and pursuing that which is healing 
as opposed to damaging So, we would offer this, again, for thought. Take great care and pay great attention to what you inform yourself with, how you inform yourself and to what you give credence because the Dalek law of creativity states into that which you place thought energy you will create and make real. You will make manifest. So, the old expression, schooling your thoughts, is a literal, actual reality. Think about what you think about and invest energy in what you want, what is beneficial, what is augmentive for yourself. for your community and the whole of the whole because what you think about you will bring about There is also another technique to assist in the expansion of perspective. And this is twofold with a fulcrum. Twofold, but balanced like a teeter totter. Acceptance of what is thought of what is wanted and assumption as the fulcrum assuming that your thought investment in beneficial holism assessment in balance in health in ease in expansion will occur this assumption gives balance an energy to what you think about and what is made manifest. However, 
It is key to start with what is. That means the individual can not be in denial, nor can the individual be in self-delusion. Acceptance of what exists in the now moment brings balance and creativity of what is wanted into action. There's also another topic we wish to offer and this has to do with very recent technologies that are gaining attention and energy because greater numbers of people are understanding the critical edge that all living systems functioning on this mother are in at this now. So, what has seemed one of the most dragging or backwards clinging to the old methodology is beginning to dissolve rapidly and many who have power and metal but have purposefully avoided notoriety are beginning to step into the new direction that advanced technologies, what are now popularly called green technologies, are beginning to get notoriety. So, there has been a burst investment in potentials, redemptive potentials, and that, dear ones, can be a great and profound cause to keep investing in hope. Also, we will give you this for a giggle. <laughs> if you do not make it this circle, 
you will make it in the next because the Tao, the whole of the whole, the All-Mother, God, whatever you want to give name, the All that is, never wastes any part of herself. There is only more we will risk saying time although in the greater reality there is no time however that is another story there are always more chances there is never an end Now, we have pulpitized quite long enough, and we will take questions. Yes. Okay. Um, Farron, it's great to talk to you once again. Uh, this question is, what effects do the GMO foods have over bodily systems? Are they responsible for autism in kids? We will give you this. This is a very risky area for Karen, and that is where to be playing around with that is for certain. Now, we will not state categorically that these bioengineered foods are the cause of autism. However, they are certainly a component that increases numbers and augmentation of cases that are occurring at this now. Many of these neurological complexities and disorders, many autoimmune disorders, have been rapidly exacerbated over the last 75 years. It is necessary to understand that the miracle of antibiotics, the development of penicillin and sulfa has done immense good. However, what everyone is dealing with at this now is way too much of a good thing. <laughs> so what has occurred in the overuse of antibiotics for every snuffle, sneeze, scratch, and cough has created 
an era of people who have weaker and more vulnerable immune systems, especially because antibiotics create a situation in the body that make it a banquet <laughs> for yeasts and yeasts are a banquet for viruses which give rise to secondary bacterial infection which is treated with more antibiotics which creates more yeast, <laughs> which attracts more virus, and then you have the cycle, the degenerative cycle that the An Ane is working so hard to interrupt and assist all to clean up so that the natural immune system can re-trigger, re, you might say, ignite, and start having the capacity to regenerate balanced function So, we would give you this, if at all possible, genetically altered foods are better in the package, not in the body. So, although it is your choice, we would state that we are not smiley about genetically engineered foods. Also, it is important to consider the energy that is generated around the production and the sustaining of those kinds of foods. Many forms of violation, both against nature and against humans are perpetrated by self-serving self-interest companies and that, in itself, is an energy which is carried in processed foods and then ingested You will simply have to face it, dear ones it is just yuck. <laughs> yes. Um, my friends are working to develop a high efficiency solar panel using thin film technology over a conventional silicone cell. Do you have any hints for them? 
We will discuss this together in greater detail at another now. We will state, however, that these individuals are not only on the right track, but there is incoming shortly a materials breakthrough especially in direct application of this flex system. It is going to be in the pliability and the adaptability of application that will be so exciting. That is all we will state at this now. Yes. Okay, Ferenc. Um, how can we best support our bodies through this time of extreme energetic changes and toxic environmental challenges? Walking is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure that each day there is a deliberate connection, a deliberate chosen connection with the direct skin and growths of the mother. Walk barefooted in the grass. Get your ventral surface against a tree. Breathe at least ten deep breaths each hour. Do not sit longer than one hour without one minute of pacing and breathing. And don't Forget water. Also, there is one very bad habit that people do that have heavy and mind-invested jobs and work. They wait too long to void the bladder. This only helps poison the system. So give yourselves permission to go pee. <laughs> And always be sure that you are completely clear. Don't get in a hurry and shut the valve off too <laughs> soon. These are the most practical and easily accomplished gifts you can give to your body. Also, we would wish to offer this. When you get up each morning, go to the mirror 
look yourself in the eye and speak to yourself aloud and say whether or not you feel silly is imperial. <laughs> say to yourself, today I will treat you as well as I am intending to treat everyone else. I will ensure that I give as much courtesy, patience, understanding, and attention to my best friend that I am looking at, as I do to all of the others that are my best friends. Treat yourself first the way you intend to treat and wish to be treated by others because, dear ones, you will be treated by others the way you treat yourself. Yes. Can you give us some hope for the planet? It feels hopeless at this now. That was my question. So you kind of answered that one. We're going to move on. Okay. Um, how do you conquer fear? It is not a matter of conquering fear. It is a matter of seeing it, accepting it exists, thanking it for its lesson, and then saying, now you may go outside in the backyard and play, <laughs> because I see you trying to jump on me, and I am not in the mood. <laughs> now, if you find yourself in a situation where you are already gripped by fear, by panic or anxiety, bring yourself immediately back to the point of power. Speak to yourself aloud and say, stop. I'm stepping to the side here for just a moment. Take a large, deep breath and state your full name, where you are standing or sitting. Reassure yourself you are not under threat. You are not under life threat. You are here at this now moment at such and such address, at such and such a place, perfectly safe. Then you will see most times fear is the fear that is strangling you is intellectual in nature. It is what the logic brain has cooked up for you to be frightened of. And you will also find that most times your fear is of a time frame that does not yet exist. And when you bring yourself back to the now moment, to the moment in which you exist at the moment, then you are back in the point of power and you can say, can hide around the corner waiting to jump on me if you want, but I can see you. So you are not hiding from me. And then 
You see, dear ones, you are once again in your balance, your center, and your point of power. Yes, we will take one further question, and then we will break shortly. Yes. Great. Is cancer a um, is cancer and disease in general just a concept we are programmed to think is real? This is a very complex issue. This is a subject, both specific and general, that cannot be easily generalized. But we will state this. There is a direct relationship between emotional health spiritual health and physical health all is connected and when any one is out of balance with the other then yes there is dis-ease which can manifest in many different diseases because of many different causes. Each individual has individual chemistry and spirituality patterns, experiences that create either she's balance or dis-ease. Many cancers are caused by guilt and obsessions of guilt. It is not always this way, but risking a collective general statement, we would state that most cancers are of guilt origin over things that were done or not done or judgments that were made or actions taken or not taken. There are many reasons for dis eases and each has its own individuality. In this now you see a spike in disease and diseases because of course there are a great many more and that is where Terran people resident on the planet. And let's face it, fear is a big fad at this now. And many self-serving corporations are heavily invested 
in self maintaining through the use of fear so that individuals think every single squiggle or sneeze or pain or sneeze <laughs> is a dis-ease that needs to be treated in the newest designer fashion. <laughs> so, we would wish to offer this for thought, setting down the fad of fear and allowing yourselves to be frightened over every little crick or zap or itch or twinge can give you much freedom not only from dis-ease but from disease also. So, we send you smiles and we will pause for liquid <laughs> rehydration and a breather. <laughs> yes. Dow Song. Once again, we give you great smiley re-welcome. We will continue to converse together. Please proceed. How can we support and help the drama of dysfunctional blended families? <laughs> there might be an hour <coughs> Go back to acceptance, attention, and assumption. Accept what is, and then make thoughts, choices, and take actions that champion you yourself first. Remember this, dear ones, you cannot be of assistance to others if you disregard or neglect yourself. However, it is very essential also to remember that the only individual over whom you have the power to change is yourself. You cannot fix anyone else. You cannot make choices for anyone else. You can only choose what you wish to act upon, what you want to respond to, and what you will tolerate. So this is all wrapped up in the Taoic law of treating yourself first the way you wish to treat and be treated by others. If you do not allow your best friend to be battered, lectured, criticized, abused, if you champion yourself and are willing to do what is required in action to be that champion for yourself. 
much of these dysfunctional situations will simply fall flat from lack of grist. It is a matter of whether or not you choose to engage. And there is this to remember. It is your inherent human right as an anetiswear, as an ensouled spark of the living whole to care or not care about any singular issue. If it harms your being, any thought or action, then it engenders harm towards all others involved, functional or dysfunctional. And there is always the ultimate action of self protection when your best friend has had enough turn and walk away disengage however battering yourself against a wall of things that you have no capability to change only hurts you. Is this at all understandable? Yes. yes. Good. <laughs> Proceed. Why does it seem people in general seem to be getting mean? Like all the school shootings, unnecessary cruelty? Dear ones, what is occurring is a primal instinct. It is related to all things occurring at this now. There are simply too many land humans for this mother to support and that creates conflict and the feeling of emotional oppression which very often erupts in violence and emotional dysfunction, things just get off. They get off. So, giving the thought to the consideration of information regarding the benefit to all of less of all people is a great contribution. This is, of course, a somewhat more complex issue than this simple explanation. One other factor to consider is that if an individual believes in the sanctity of life, 
this must not be defined or interpreted as only human land life. The sanctity of life is how much balance can be achieved between all circular, interconnected, interdependent living systems of the mother as a whole and having that concept as a force for action and choice as the fundamental consideration sanctity of all life no matter what form it manifests in is true sanctity of life. No one component within the living system is more essential to the health and balance of that system than any other. So, as has been stated, you are coming to the intricacies and levels of the first law of the Tao. Nothing can be separated, divided, thrown away, taken out, eliminated from anything else within the living system because the universe and all that exists within and without of the physical plane is one living being. All is one. Yes. How can we protect the earth from corporate interest? The most effective method is simply to refuse to buy or use anything made through violation and to think about, to pay attention to where things go things that are not used where do they go how are they made if the individual does not support what is created through violation that is true power for in this corporate structured manipulated world if there is no money it cannot sustain itself So we are back to thinking about what you think about and how you think about what is used and discarded. It requires considerable thought. Yes. What exactly are ETs doing for the nuclear mess in Japan? This is not a topic 
that can be discussed with detailed explanation. Now, it is not because it is not known. It is because there are protection requirements for those who are working on this ongoing problem that cannot be allowing their own personal detection the Frashono are very vulnerable the ocean people in coordination that are working on this issue are very vulnerable and the coordinated efforts require detection protection that must not be explained. We can only give you this as a fact. There is assistance being rendered and there are neutralizers and solutions being used. So, you are not alone either in concern or in action. There is a new, potentially resolving technique that is being employed even at this now by the very government of Nippon in coordination with radiation experts and nuclear scientists. Nuclear scientists. <laughs> Please excuse me. So, it is being worked on. Yes. Are animals different from humans spiritually? Another quite interesting and complex question. Yes, they are different. And no, they are not different. <laughs> Animals generally have what we call hive patterns. So a species of animal has one soul pattern divided between the species. However, there are many accelerators that are occurring at this now, and several additions that are coming very close 
that are under the direction of the Buddhic entities and are, as you might say, in line for ensoulment. <clears throat> Elephants are rapidly progressing towards ensoulment level, meaning each will be and, and that is where in she self the great mountain gorillas are also being considered there is some varieties of birds that are being considered also now there is another level especially one with domesticated hives dogs cats what you would call pets <clears throat> and sometimes you have a magnetized hive which is an increased hive rate of function so there is evidence of greater intelligence, intuition, connection, and these magnetized hives are often specifically sent to individuals through their backers. Much is being learned by Terran humans about animal intelligence and many researchers are beginning to understand that all birds and mammal species are a hell of a lot smarter <laughs> than anyone has given them credit for being. So there is one hopeful example of expansion occurring not only in species of animals but in Terran human intelligence quotient also one of the main problems that Terrans are dealing with at this now is their arrogance of thinking that they are the only unique component that needs honor and saving give that some thought yes Okay, Ferens, we have two more questions. Proceed. When will we start experiencing more positive shifts within the U.S. government? What kind of shifts can we look for? It is important to understand this. Knowing when to play a game and knowing when to not play 
However, this concept is juxtaposed with the fact that in order to change a system, you have to use that system. And if you do not participate in the system, ignoring it or dropping out or in action will not make it change. So it is like technology in some ways. Many are so against the technology that has been developed and state the philosophy that technology should be backed off. However, we state this. Only balance between spirituality and technology can occur if better, more holistic technologies are developed that will clean up the dirty ones that already exist. And in that action, that choice to develop cleaner, better, more holistic technologies, the spirit will also be ignited and that connection between spirituality and technology will become ever so much more clear and then it will cause what you would say is a snowball effect and that will bring balance and eventually eventually in a time perspective that is very tricky but eventually create a platform for the jump the rate dimensional shift in which all action and thought taken will be balanced with the creationing of the whole of the whole now you will just have to do your best to unravel that one <laughs> yes okay for the final question proceed we are just about okay. having this one cooked <laughs> Well, we, or can we look forward to possibly an ET visit? We are in such chaos, and nothing seems to cut through all the religious distress, the economic distress. Would, could we look forward to something grand that would let us know we're all one and possibly cut through this to make it easier? This has already occurred. However, The constraints are still intense because of the existent weaponry and who has control over that weaponry. The consortium and the Gatai are still in their own kind of wrangling conference to decide whether 
an appearance en masse would be a positive action to take. But we will state this. As long as there is the worldwide tribal policy of shoot first and ask questions later, those of larger perspective will, to put it humorously, stay in conference. <laughs> <laughs> you can expect individual connections to be made as have been being made for many, many years. But there is also a greater risk at this now that individuals contacted would be literally snatched and not by the others, by those who do not want what is known by that contact to be shared on a larger basis. That is all we can give of this at this now. Eventually, hopefully, soon, much more notice will be treated with credibility. That is all we may give. Now, in closing, we would wish to offer much applause, large embraces, many smiles, as we have felt a great elation energy that is sent to us also. So we will leave you with this. Dear ones, honor, honor yourselves as individuals and as unique sparks of the ever-living Tao. Offer yourself championship, kindness, courtesy, and you will see, you will come to love yourself and yourselves as we do. Try it. You will like it. <laughs> it is good for you. Dao Song. Uh, you've mentioned something about how cetaceans are can divide themselves up into scientists, musicians, artists. I would like to know if uh, whales and dolphins do that and um, if they take on different roles the way we do. You are speaking of something similar to a life choice of talent or occupation. We will state this. Many do gather to share talents and occupations. But ocean people 
in social structure are much more complex and much more we do not mean it to be insulting well rounded than Karen humans. Land people tend to specialize in a field or talent or develop a gift to the diminishing of other potentials, whereas the many shared talents of ocean people are much wider, more varied, and are experienced and shared when opportunities or gatherings arise. There are also very advanced scientists within the ocean people communities and there are methods of exchanging ideas and information that parents as of yet have no comprehension. Ocean people are also capable of varying degrees of mind connection, telepathy, you say, at this now much work is being done to attempt to secure Toxic waste canisters that are or have been dumped into the ocean. There is also a great intensity of work and research being undertaken to contain the damage which continues to occur from the Fukushima nuclear power disaster that it is being done in different areas is not significant but if you think on having with humor, safety in the workplace, the ocean people cannot be directly in fatal contact with this problem. Nevertheless, it is being studied yeah. I believe one of the biggest issues in this country today is abortion. 
and there's many people who see it as an evil and many people who see it as being okay. Is abortion a taboo and is it negative karma to have an abortion? And also when does the soul enter the fetus or the baby? That is a very complex question. We will state this. The soul can choose to enter an unborn house two to three weeks prior to the actual birth of that house, or you would say physical body. Most souls, however, enter between three days to two weeks after the physical body is born. So, the answer to your question is no. It is not a taboo as we have so defined a taboo. It is important, especially at this now, for all Terran humans to understand that no form of life is more valuable, more essential than any other form of life. So, Karen, humans who believe that they, meaning human life, is more perfect, is more essential to the function of the whole of the whole are simply holding to a belief that is, you might say, egocentric. Life, all life, is life. And since all living beings, all living things, from micro to macro are connected. There is required to be balance in terms of sustainability. When Terran humans assume superiority or greater importance or, as some believe, sacredness. These are simply dominant delusions. The greatest affront and violation that is occurring at this now is overpopulation of one species, Terran humans, what most cannot seem to understand is that, as we stated, all life is connected and related to all other life. And Therefore, everything needs everything else. When one like form interrupts the mother's balance, the planetary balance in terms of 
atmospheric quality or what many call natural resources. They do not understand that they are only hurrying their own demise. So, we come back to your question and the concept of abortion. We will give you this. The existing soul pattern, or you would say the individual that is already functioning and alive, is the more essential, terminating, and incoming house is not a violation, or as many would have it called, a sin. The key to all of these complex problems is management, management and self-responsibility. We find many caring humans to have poor management skills and sometimes little self-responsibility. So, what is to be done? It is beneficial to prevent conception in the first place. Then, the issue of abortion or fetal termination would be moot. It is also essential for Karen humans, land people, to understand that all life is the Tao's chosen. Karen humans are not, as it is said, God's chosen people. And there are even many beliefs that divide people from each other because of beliefs of superior beliefs. But the essential fact is for Karen humans to realize the exact intertwining the inseparable nature of all life on this mother planet. Everything is connected to everything. And if one species continues with the concept of domination, of exclusivity, of importance, then that mother's perfect balance in relationship to all life will be broken and the species of dominance will not survive. Yes. So is global warming a problem? And I heard something about how you said that it had saved us from a polar shift, so can you go into that too and just discuss global warming in general? Global warming is a fact. It is occurring, and it will change the makeup and 
life of this mother planet. The poles are the balancing agency of this mother and she's magnetic fields. The weight of the magnetic and physical wobble of the planet increases according to the degree of surface weight of ice at the poles now melting of the poles can decrease the planetary wobble and can prevent the weight of the southern pole from overbalancing and causing a shift towards the center of equilibrium, which would be the equator. However, the damage that occurs to the ecology and to the present Terran or land human life will also undergo incredible cataclysms, whether there is a shift or not, if global warming continues. Now, as is known in scientific circles, the use of fossil fuels for energy increasingly and exponentially are warming the atmosphere and in turn the land and oceans, the mass of the mother planet, which is causing weather irregularities and many levels of crisis because of this. The most detrimental factor in terms of global warming is the use of fossil fuel. Also, Population itself is the number one weight and causes the most damage to the ecology, the environment, all other life on this mother. This mother planet simply is not designed to sustain, to support the numbers of Terran individuals, Terran and that is where, as we name them, too many people, too much use of fossil fuels, too much detrimental gases in the planet atmosphere. This is global warming and the results, the ramifications, the most important to action to employ to essential actions to take to regain 
balance on all levels for this mother planet is to limit population increase and to cease immediately the use of fossil fuel as an energy source. Now we wish to make this very clear. Global warming will not kill this mother planet. Global warming will simply make the mother's environment impossible for Terran humanity to survive on this mother. So as you would say, this is the bottom line. The more difficulties you offer the planet in terms of attaining balance, the quicker you are eliminating yourselves as a species. Now, this sounds very doom and dark, but there are ways to halt this continually progressing situation. However, it is going to who need a paradigm shift, a shift in humans' thought processes. What has been broken must be repaired, and that is the understanding of the first law of the Tao, the first law of the whole of the whole, what you call God, the first law of the Tao is all is one, and Terran humans have disassociated themselves from this law. All is one. All life is connected to all other life. There is no separating life from all life and Humans have severed themselves from this Dalek concept, God concept. All life is essential to all other life. Yes. Now this follows that technology that is in balance is the technology that must be immediately embraced and developed. Many who are large in spirit believe that stopping the use of technology will remedy what ails this mother planet. But we are here to assure you that 
it is the more rapid development of balanced technologies, what is now popularly called green or clean technology, that affords the chance and potential to regain balance for this mother planet and to assist in the prevention of a magnetic polar shift. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's always you are quite welcome. You have said uh, that negative energy causes earthquakes. Can you explain how negative energy causes uh, things like earthquakes and volcanoes to erupt? It is important to understand that there are other levels of function occurring with this planet other than merely physics, the physics of the physical world. There are other planar levels of energy that operate and that ensouled species are the creators of all forms of energy. This is a very complex concept and process. Souls create energy in the physical plane. If it is energy that is positive and in balance with physical functions of the planet and the planes that work with this planet on a non-physical level, then this energy leaves and is absorbed into the Tao the whole of the whole for its continued growth. Negative energy caused by ensouled beings from fear, conflict, violation, war, rigidity of thought, death, stuck or trapped in the stress ether, which is similar to the mother's aura. It is not measurable on the physical plane level, but it is an outer skin, if the negative energy gets trapped within the stress ether surrounding this mother planet, the planet she self attempts to balance that negativity by using volatile environmental events to release the negativity, to neutralize that negativity so that the flow of positive from and to the mother planet can continue. Now this neutralization process manifests in the physical plane in earthquakes, 
in storms, in violent upheavals of weather. It is, of course, connected to what is known regarding the function of the land masses and substructure of the mother itself from the core outward. So the imbalances that manifest and are neutralized by shifts in the tectonic plates resulting in earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, huge storms are the mother's way of neutralizing the negativity that has been created by ensouled beings, mainly Terran humans. Yes. It seems that a lot of people are arguing over what's the correct and proper diet. I was wondering if you could share a little bit about that. Like, what do processed foods do to the body? And is meat necessary for survival? And what is the ideal diet? If you eat foods that are not manipulated, are not engineered, that are foods that belong to this mother, whether it is an animal food or a vegetable food, it is going to be healthy because parent humans are, as you know, omnivores. It is a matter of honoring food in all its Stages from growth to death or harvest to consumption that will give you healthy diet. And humans, if they are eating in this manner, will find that for many days, they will not be hungry for anything but root vegetables or leaf vegetables. Whereas another few days, they may find themselves, if they are listening to the body, they may, as it is said, crave fowl, fish, or meat. But the key for health is to listen to what your body wants to eat that is naturally and not forcefully manipulated or grown, or mishandled, or tortured in any way, and that all that is eaten is done so with honor. Also, there is a key. Everything has a season when everything is eaten in its season where, where it is grown. Then you will have communities of much 
healthier people. That is, not to say that those who cannot grow or obtain food in their area should be overlooked. But then again, this in itself can bring up the pressures of an increasing population that this mother simply cannot support. And that is where care and humans get into trouble trying to make more than is possible to do for the mother, for the mother to grow. Chemicals that are added as taste enhancers or taste manipulators or preserving capabilities are not good. Originally, the Terran human body is constructed metabolically to be a browser only when seasons change do they become what would be called savers to prolong food through difficult temperature. Yes. We would state this. If you are consuming meat, that you have yourself raised or cared for or that are locally raised and cared for with honor and compassion and are consumed so, then meat are not Bad. However, if animals are fed what you might call chemical garbage, then humans will be eating chemical garbage. First of all, it is essential to determine the yeast levels, the candida levels in the biochemistry of these people you are concerned about. Yeast can leave the digestive tract and get into the bloodstream. Once this occurs, any number of systems of the body can be afflicted. Now, if Candida albicons levels in the bloodstream invade the nervous system, it can produce 
many, many different conditions and problems for the nervous system, including disruption of balanced brain hormonal production and therefore cause the complicated what people are calling personality disorders or emotional imbalance and therefore difficulty being behaviorally balanced so that is the first essential now as to your question regarding these mood stabilizers or what are called antidepressants. These are what we often refer to as designer medications. And because each individual's biochemistry is different from another, these designer medications are based on the reactions of norms within trial groups of people. So while such a medication could be, could be of assistance to one individual without upsetting other aspects of the biochemistry, they can be very damaging to another individual. This may seem to be a vague answer. What we are meaning in general is that the risk of using these antidepressants can be oftentimes more harmful and more biochemically damaging if, if the primary cause is not taken care of primarily. So, if an individual starts taking an antidepressant and still has a great degree of systemic yeast, in the body, especially in the nervous system, antidepressants can only make these imbalances worse and put an individual at risk for side effects, which then, through traditional medicine are treated with other designer medications which cause other side effects which are treated with other medications and so forth. So in the end the individual would become more and more 
biochemically imbalanced, treating the candida albicans yeast levels first before administering any antidepressant can often, often eliminate the need for the antidepressant in the first place because those personal and emotional disorders will naturally smooth out without an overload of yeast in the body and therefore eliminate the need for medications such as Zoloft. Is this at all understandable? You say that uh, mythical creatures are all remembrances of the past, so I wanted to ask about a few and find out a little about them and see if they had souls and if they lived here. Um, so I thought I would start with fairies. These are rememberings not only of creatures that are incorporated into Earth mythology in many, many cultures. But these are also trans-dimensional energies, trans-dimensional beings, and those with what used to be called the sight could see and respond in interaction with these beings. Now, there are many varieties of these kinds of beings depending upon the cultural origin of the mythology. Gnomes, elves, cherries, nymphs, all these are beings that are connected to the stability and ecology of many living mothers. Their basic function, their work, is to care for and assist the interaction between ensouled species and hive species so they can be representative of trees, of water, of air, of smaller, what you call animal species, and plant species. But there is veracity in their existence and although it is difficult to function on this mother at this now with such environmental distress there are still vast areas that are cared for and assisted 
by these interdimensional energies, which you cumulatively call fairies. Is this at all understandable? What can you tell me about uh, dragons and uh, unicorns? Uh, did they have souls? All living beings have souls, not in the same manner that you would think of as an editor, as people who have individual soul patterns, but there can be a species pattern and each member shares that species pattern as opposed to an individually unique pattern such as Terran humans and ocean people. However, there are also gradations. There are levels or degrees of vibrational rates in what you might call advancement of souls in different species. Now, we have spoken previously of dragons, possibly not to you, so we will state this. There are, on one mother, species of telepathic dragons that make life bonding with companions. Now, they do not speak aloud. They can only communicate with their bonded individual. They are not inherently hostile but they are what you would call quite alien, and all remnants or ancestors that were resident on this mother are not in existence at this now. As to unicorns, there have been unicorns present on this mother. However, we will only state this due to bad treatment. They have been taken home. That is all we will give of this. Yes. Yes, there have been giants many, many thousands of years ago, but due to gravity and pressure and general inadaptability, they no longer exist. As to vampires, it is a large giggle. There is much in the mythology regarding vampires, but it is a complete misinterpretation of how disease can be spread. It is wrong to say, or rather to use the term myth, because many myths hold the great truth. But the concept and existence of vampires who cannibalize other people is not correct. They do 
not exist. They are creations from sometimes lingering diseases or catastrophic diseases. Yes. Dao Song. Dao Song. Dao Song. We give you great warm greetings. We have found this conversation. And you would say small talk, quite entertaining. We can see that you have some profound questions to ask. We would wish, however, to offer a thing. First, if you so choose. Yes. Much discussion has been around the topic of consideration, beneficial holism assessment. But the root, the foundation, and the base of all that functions in balance and in harmony in physical plane existence is operation based upon the first law of the Tao, the whole of the whole, what you call God, or the Goddess, and that is all is one. Nothing that exists can be separated from anything else that exists because all is one. And in order to function in the perfect imperfection of physical plane, all must be one. Now, what is the perfect imperfection? If there was not imperfection, there could not be growth. And the Tao himself, above all things, is continual growth. And the Tao is also perfect. So, Imperfection, meaning growth, is built into that perfect system. So, what do you have? Imperfection equals growth equals perfection. So, all that exists is essential to the whole of the whole, or it would not exist at all. This is an imperative realization that Heron humans needs recognize all is one. The planet, the living systems, and all that exist within is one living being. A spark of the living Tao, to self, 
Now you are also, we see, wanting to ask regarding conflict in interpretation regarding what we call bringers of balance. It is a very stretchy and delicate topic. However, we will give you this. Bringers of balance move a philosophy towards inclusion. Towards inclusion, there is no exclusivity in the venue of a bringer of balance. Yeshua ben Yoshef of Nazareth, that individual that you call Jesus, at this now, is used, used in name to justify many beliefs and many actions, but she's is not heard, not heard. What is tending to be followed in this specific society at this now is the Saul Paul. And that is the driving philosophy of fundamentalism, as it is called. We will give you this if it is inclusion and lacking in judgment, it is a true message of a bringer of balance. There have been many bringers of balance who have taken different approaches to present the all is one message, and the Yeshua has created huge impact, importance, and conflict. It is most important to remember that in she's physical lifetime, She's intent is harmony, not conflict, no judgment, because in the great reality there is no judging. The Tao, the whole, the God, Goddess, does not judge as irrelevant any part of herself. And that is an extremely difficult message to express in words by a physical human constrained by she's own physical form and method of verbal communication. So, any who promote the concept of all is one are actually bringers of balance so, the old followers of the law of one, 
the law of one are bringers of balance. And that, dear ones, is what is. Follow, think, and take action that includes and have tolerance and patience but no energy investing in what divides because in the greater reality whether it be in physical plane or all other planar levels. All is one. Yes. Thank you. See, so way, you are so very welcome. I would like to ask about plastics and you know, humans are creating a ton of garbage every day and it's polluting the whole earth. People believe that it never breaks down. I was wondering what happens to it all, whether if there is a polar shift, if it will disintegrate or disappear, or if there's a way to deal with it successfully in this circle. Yes, 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 and yes. It is possible to develop organic plastics or similar substances that can be reabsorbed. Yes, Pepal, Terran, and that is where Pepal do produce. Not just a ton, but many hundred thousands of tons of garbage. It is a matter of paying attention, of realizing that this does occur, and choosing to take whatever action is required in order to process and return as a gift in a form that is reusable. And that technology is not only possible, it is existent at this now. Now there are many who do not want these advanced consumptive or Possibly a better word is reconsumptive technologies applied and many forms of biodegradable materials have been suppressed, but not longer. Now, as regarding the polar shift and the trash that exists The conditions that 
can occur during a shift will produce certain chemical and biochemical changes in many surface systems, skin systems of the mother in soils in certain forms of waters that these can be digested and neutralized in a positive manner. But at this now, there is Terran human technology that could resolve this problem. And it is definitely a problem. We will only state this. cannot be suppressed for much longer. Yes. Does this have to do with the uh, machines that uh, can get so hot that they turn the chemicals into a plasma? And, uh, and make them all inert. This is a step. This is one form that can be immediately applied. What is essential is for will to be turned because of realization that it is essential in order for survival. Terran, and that is where Terran humans, people, must ignite the will through the realization that this is necessary. But that technology can be applied that you were speaking of. Yes. Okay, um, thanks. Thank you very much. See, so uh, the Michael has a burning question. We would invite. Um, I guess in this now we've discovered how to treat bacterial infections, but we've only come as far as learning how to. Um, maintain viruses, like with antivirals, is is destroying virus, like HIV, um, completely a possibility? It is an accomplished fact. Once again, we are moving into risky, you would say, territory. So we will give this but you must take care to use this with great discretion. There 
is from the very, excuse, the very mother herself. A remedy provided to interrupt, not kill, but interrupt the process that makes this specific virus incompatible with human existence. The cure for all imbalances in human health. The Tao has already provided. The planet she self provides all that is required for health in a lifespan. Tinkering has brought much ease in many ways. However, it has also produced more potential for incompatibility with what is natural within the living system of the mother. Use this with great care because there is already knowledge of how to remedy this pandemic. There are powers that do not wish this to occur otherwise. To put it candidly, and with a little flippance, they would be out of business. Are you saying they are changing the virus in such a manner that the natural cure for it is being negated? What we are stating is that in developing substances that treat symptoms and pursuing what brings metal reward is more important to them than developing and understanding the remedies that are already existent and available. It is simply a lack of pursuing and studying the mother's own natural biochemistry that is lacking. Is this at all more clear? 
Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good. Proceed. What past technologies have been available in the medical field that have, from maybe from past civilizations, that are things that we can look towards for the future? And also, maybe if you can speak a little bit about if we're descended from civilizations from hundreds of thousands of years ago, how our bodies have changed during that time. You are such a large smile. <laughs> In many previous civilizations, crystal technology was greatly used in medicine so that reorganization of biological functions could be accomplished through crystals managed by physicians applying mind mechanics. Now, this can be very involved because crystals also ran very advanced imaging machines where physicians could see from a cellular level, tissue level, to the entire body level in imagery and visual presentations in holographic dimension could be viewed by physicians who would then focus on any detrimental irregularity working within the body and with mind-coordinated, crystal-focused attention, interrupt or eliminate, or in many cases, close a cut or mend a broken bone without invasive procedures. In some civilizations there were actually physical, what you would call surgery, but in most advanced this was augmented and supported with mind mechanic focused crystal technology for healing. Now, your understanding of what radiation is in this now and the application of this is much different than the sun-focused, the solar-focused whole spectrum of radiation that was used, for example, through mind-focused crystals in the Intellenta circle and even greater refinements were accomplished in the Muyon and before its twisting in the great Kualitrosa circle. But that is a very lengthy discussion. We will state this the forms of radiation that are being applied at this now are within 
a very narrow and risky spectrum of application. So, in this now, it is very hit and miss, you might say. Some people can respond well, and others respond by demise. So, the safest method of use of this specific technology in this now is careful study of individual to individual and avoidance of the assumption that applying radiation as a general protocol is to be avoided. Now, as to the application of previous Herkel's medical technology in this now, we will state this. Practice, practice, practice. Find an elementary power of crystal. The best general crystal that can be adaptable is a clear quartz crystal. Colors are tricky. Colors are tricky if not faceted with care. A natural clear quartz crystal and practice assigning the crystal a specific charge and focus the intent and mental energy for that purpose. It can be specific or it can be more general. However, we would state this. It is contrary to the natural balance of growth of crystals within the mother's body to attempt to mentally use that natural growth for any purpose other than one of bringing wholeness and balance. In other words, dear ones, you would risk huge backfires to attempt to use crystals for negativity. Yes. We are very intense in this conversation. This one is at low ebb. We will take one further question, if you so choose. Otherwise, we shall close. Okay, maybe you can give a brief answer to this question. Um, most people believe that we descended from cavemen. Uh, is that a totally false theory? It is both true and false. It is a large giggle for us because, dear one, cavemen were never really cavemen. If you are thinking of the hive human house evolutionary procedure that developed within the natural evolution of this animal and plant life on this mother, then you are correct. You did evolve from cavemen along 
the natural evolution process, which is a reality. But many hundreds of thousands of years ago, there was intervention of a positive offering from what has been called star seed. So all and that is where all and that is where be they see and water pipple or terran people all and that is where in sold species on this planet carry star seed genes so you are both of this mother and of seed from a sister consortium, a group of other mothers, followers of the law of one. And with that, we will leave you all with the many questions we have just raised. We wish to send you many smiles, much applause, and large embraces, power, and positive energy. Dao song, parents. Dao song. Dao song. Love yourselves as we do. What is Stonehenge, or what was Stonehenge, and how long ago was it a functioning uh, whatever it was? It is much older than it is thought to be, and it, as it stands today, is a crude remaking of a functioning mechanical that was made hundreds of thousands of years ago. Originally, it was a mechanical that measured and calculated astronomical, we are searching for words that are understandable, astronomical relativity, timelines. There is also in that area, another site that is directly related to what this more recent Stonehenge monument represents, and it is at Amesbury that was a particle accelerator. These two mechanicals in their origin were built for intergalactic calculation for travel. The Stonehenge originally in this building, this most recent iteration, shall we say, is 
an astronomical calendar. It can be risky to give more of the original mechanicals functions. These were built the very originals. We are not speaking of the present Stonehenge, but the original mechanicals were built in a previous very highly advanced technologically civilization that existed on this mother. They brought their own demise due to perversions of their highly advanced technology. So, this is a very lengthy way of saying that the present day or when it was originally built, Stonehenge is a monument. It, it is a calendar. It is set on the site of a grid point, an energy grid point on this mother. But it does not have the capacities that the very original mechanicals had. However, the energies, the residuals from those previously functioning mechanicals can still be felt by sensitives and most everyone. And since this Stonehenge was built, the rocks themselves have absorbed some of those, you might say, transcendental energies from the original mechanicals or you would say machines that were used for hyperspatial travel. That is all we can give. Yes. 